Shalom Aleichem, everyone. Hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful week. It is Erev Shabbos, Parshas Chai Sara, and uh, we have basically a parsha that has three fundamental ideas, and I think there's a common theme that really uh, binds all these three ideas together. On the one hand, we start up, we open up the parsha, and it's striking that we call the parsha Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah, even though this is the parsha that opens up recounting her death. We are told she's 127 years old. And the first part of the parsha is Avram's negotiations with Bnei Ches and with Ephron Hachiti uh, regarding the purchase of Maras Pela, the ultimate burying place of Sarah, of Avram, and ultimately the Avos HaKadoshim, Adam and Chava, and a place that will inspire Jews for many, many years in the future, even Arayamaze, even this coming Shabbos, where many thousands of people will celebrate the Avos HaKadoshim in Morasa Machpelah. In that negotiation, Avram describes himself as Ger v'toshav anochi imachem. I am with you here, both a Ger v'toshav. I'm a stranger, I don't really, I'm not one of you. And in fact, when they offer him Morasa Machpelah as a gift, he says, nothing do what I want to pay, kesef mole, because when we take gifts, we become beholden, we become bonded, we become, we owe them, and therefore Avon wants to make this crystal clear, this is something I want to pay in full for, because after all, on the one hand, I am amongst you, I am one of you, I am a resident, on the other hand, I am a gear. And Rav Salvechik, in a very well-known piece, it's recorded and written up in the book, Reflections of the Rav, identifies that a Jew in the world really wears multiple hats. On the one hand, he is very much a Toshav, he's a citizen of his country. He belongs, he cares about the social issues, the economical issues, famine, prosperity, the various issues that pertain to every single country. He is one of the citizenry. But on the other hand, he understands he's also uniquely Jewish and has a uniquely Jewish perspective, a uniquely halachic perspective. And on the other hand, he is a gear. He doesn't fully, fully fit in. He's not fully one of them. And unfortunately, we see all too often and that um, we're, we're Toshavim, but there are people out there that always make us feel, you know what, you're gay and you don't fully, fully belong. We are, we have this very dichotomous, dichotomous relationship with, with our host countries and with the world around us. On the one hand, we are regular Toshavim. On the other hand, we are gay rim that... Avram makes very, very clear. That's story number one. Story number two is we have the Shidduch for Yitzchak, where Eliezer is sent out to find a wife for Yitzchak. And again, that parsha opens up with a very, very striking pasuk, Perch of Dal, pasuk Gimel, where the Torah tells us that Avram makes Eliezer take a shvua, that Asher lo tikach ishalev nimi bnosak na'ani, Asher anochi yoshev b'kirbo. He makes him take a shvur that he will not marry someone of Benos Kanaan. You leave the neighborhood, you leave this area to get a wife for Yitzchak. Why? So there's extra four, four words over here. Asher Anochi Yoshei Bikirbo. Don't take a girl from here. Asher Ani Yoshei Bikirbo. For some reason, because I live here. Don't take a girl from here. And the Kliyakr is bothered. What's so bad about Benos Kanaan? They're all there about Zara. Well, guess what? You're going to go to the house of Lava, the house of Basul, you're going to go to Haran. But they're all there about Zara there too. So, what are you helping? How does it benefit? You're going to take a girl from there. They have the same issues, the same paganis- paganism tendencies that the local girls do. So, the Kliyaka says something very profound and very beautifully explains that Avram understood that whoever Yitzhak was going to marry, <clears throat> was going to have to undergo a reformation, a change. She was going to have to join the house of Avram, be different than she was when she was growing up. She couldn't bring the values of love on with her. If he took a local girl, a girl from Canaan, a girl from down the block, a girl from the neighborhood, so she would be with her childhood friends. She would be every other weekend, she'd go to her family. She'd be doing the same things that she was always doing, and that would not work. If she was still in her comfort zone, she couldn't achieve a change. She had to be uprooted. Don't take a local girl, take a girl from there and bring her here. True, the girls over there were also old, the Avodah But Abba understood she was going to have to change, and in order to change, you have to extricate yourself 
from your comfort zone. You have to be divorced a little bit from your environment and then you can forge a new direction. Avram understood this very well because when he was given the command to start a new people, to start a new nation, it was with the mission of Lech Lecha Me'artzecha, leave your comfort zone, forge your new direction. When Bnei Yisrael get their revelation at Har Sinai, they're in the middle of a desert, out of their comfort zone. Moshe has his revelation out of his comfort zone, and this is a theme that permeates any steps of growth. That's why boys in yeshiva grow so much, because they leave the comforts of home, they leave their comfort zone of their society, and are able to forge for themselves a new and hopefully expanded direction. Last story is Avram after Sarah dies, after he marries of Yitzchak, he's towards the end of his life as well, and he starts over a little bit. He vayikach isha. He takes a wife, Ushma Kitura. And he marries Keturah. And the Torah tells us that they had children. And the children grew up and Avram sees he's about to die. He's not. He's going to die soon. And he brings everything, everyone in. He gives Yitzchak essentially all of his portion. hapilakshim. And to the sons that he has with Keturah, Natan Avraham Matanot, he gives them gifts. Vayishalchem me'al Yitzchak benon. He sends them off away from Yitzchak, his son. It's no coincidence that Chazal say Keturah was Hagar. And it's no coincidence that just like Sarah and Avram had to, in a certain sense, move Yishmael along, give Yitzchak the space, free of Yishmael, to become one of the Avos, so Avram does the same exact thing. And in a certain sense, he sends these B'nai Pilakshim along, away from Yitzchak, to enable Yitzchak to become the man he is going to become. And I think there's a real theme in this week's Parsha, which is very consistent, is everyone is looking to grow. Everyone wants to expand themselves. And in order to do so, we have to know we live in a very, very tenuous world. A world where we are, on the one hand, Toshavim. We are part of our societies, whichever society that might be. And on the other hand, we are Geirim. We have to distance ourselves sometimes. Sometimes we have to uproot ourselves from our comfort zone as Rivka had to in order to forge a new path. Sometimes we have to remove the impediments that are in our way, in Yitzchak's case, the B'nei HaPilak Shim, in order to forge our identity, our core identity. We have to be very careful when we are Toshavim to understand, yes, but we need our filters, we need our separations. And perhaps that's why this Parsha is called Chaye Sarah, because in Avram's life, that's exactly the role that Sarah played. When she saw that Yishmael was going to be a threat to Yitzchak, she demands that Yishmael be distanced from Yitzchak. As hard as that was for Avram, Avram resisted it. How can, I, how can I do that to Yishmael? He's my flesh and blood as well. And, Av, and Hashem responds, Kol Asher Tomar Sarah, Shema B'Kolah, Sarah is onto something. Sarah was the one who always stood as Avram brought all of the world inside his house. In his Achnas HaSorachim, in his Kiruv Rechokim, Sarah was the one who stood by, at the Petach HaOel to make sure that the house still maintained its purity, that there was a good sense of filtration, that the screens were up so the fresh air could come in, but the things that would pollute that fresh air to stay on the outside. That's a very, very subtle balance. But you want to know why this parish is called Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah, even though it's about her, her death. It's because every step of Avram's life, even after her death, was influenced by the tremendous influence of Sarah, by understanding that great, great subtlety, that sensitivity, that on the one hand we are Toshavim, on the other hand the Geirim, and to know when to open those doors, when to close them, how to navigate that very, very complex and deep relationship, profound relationship, and to do it in a successful way so that we and our families can truly forge and put ourselves on the path and direction where we can excel in all areas in our Lord Hashem. Have a wonderful Shabbos.